I don't know how many of you have been listening to what people have told you that you're Jesus. going to be. Jesus. But you will be only who the Creator has told you that you're going to be. Amen. I don't know how many of us have had this life places parameters around who we can be. Now, we couldn't go to school. My father used to tell us a poor man's legacy is that his children will go to school. And I can't get you there. My father had come from a town in Puerto Rico that was very, very poor. And he lived on the poorest street of all to such a point that the name of the street was called Get Out If You Can. Jesus. That's how poor people were. And the reason they said Get Out If You Can because most people were so poor they left that street in a coffin because of TB, tuberculosis. Mm. Wow. It was called Get Out If You Can. And you all hear about trafficking, human trafficking today. My father was human trafficker. Wow. He, he had been trafficked. They showed him a film of a job in the United States. They told him that the farmer was going to pay for his ticket and that he would work on the farm until he paid for that ticket. When he got to that place, and now mind you, my father didn't have a father or a mother by the time he was seven, and he was working 10 hours a day for about seven days a week. So he had not gone to school, but he used to sell pastries and he would do math in his head he didn't know what the numbers looked like but he knew how to make the numbers work in his head so when he got to this farm he started doing the numbers in his head and he figured out that if he had to pay for his winter coat if he had to pay for his shaving cream and stuff on that farm right that he was never going to be able to get out of that farm with what they were paying him even if he didn't get a coat, even if he didn't get those things and grew a beard, he still wasn't going to get out. He said, I am not going to be anybody's slave in here. Jesus. And my father escaped from there. That's another story for another day. <laughs> so this is who my family is. Do we have the means for me to go to school? No. My guidance counselor said, I am not sending an effing Puerto Rican mm. to college. And she said the word to me. Wow. Wow. I was 16. What was I supposed to tell her? Wow. My mother had taught me never to say those words. Wow. But then a man came to my church two weeks after that. He came from the Bronx, and we were in Brooklyn. If you live in New York, you say the Bronx does not come to Brooklyn, and Brooklyn does not go to the Bronx. You know that. And on a Sunday, when you have to take a train, it takes two and a half hours to go from the Bronx to Brooklyn, and then back. This man got up as a visitor, and he said, I am here today because the Lord has sent me. There is someone here who needs to go to college, and I'm here to tell you how to get there. Mm -hmm. Come and see me after the service. Okay, God. And my mother said, that's you. <laughs> because my mother said to me, whatever the Lord has created you to do, if you give yourself totally to God, Amen. God will take you there. Amen. Amen. Yeah. My life does not belong to anybody except Jesus. When my husband and I went to get married, I told him that. I told him that I could not love him more than the Lord. I told him that if he ever got between me and the Lord, there was going to be a problem because I was going to have to say no to him and yes to Jesus. Yes. Yes. And my husband totally understood that because he said that's how I live my life too. Amen. We didn't get married just because we loved each other. We got married because we got permission from the Lord. We got married because we first learned to love each other's peoples. Do you understand what that Amen. means? Amen. Amen. I was reading a book on preaching by Gardner Taylor. By the 112 pages, I'll never forget. By the time I finished reading that book, I had fallen in love with my husband's people. <laughs> and then I knew I was in love with him. Yeah. That's important. And he ministered in our community. And he had come to love my people. Yeah. That's important. Because we needed to be able to be a witness. Awesome. 
Love is not just romantic love. Love is love for Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 What does it mean for the disruptor to come? It meant that the disruptor disrupted all kinds of rules and things and got me through college, a master's degree, and a doctor's degree. Hallelujah. It meant that when I finished, I didn't have loans to pay. Because he had given me scholarship. Jesus. It meant that I had to listen to a father who said, I only want a hundred here. I don't want 99, I want a hundred. Say amen to that. Amen. Amen. It meant a lot of hard work. Yes. See, we want to say amen. Yes, Jesus, give it to me. But then the Jesus says, I you gotta walk into this. Come on now. This out here. Is everybody still with me? Amen. Okay. It meant that the Lord would call me to do things I had never imagined myself doing. To the point, can I be very real? Amen. You ever been so nervous? You know, you gotta run back and forth to the bathroom. Amen. Yep. Yeah. I was doing things that that's what it did for me. I said, I can't do this, God. I can't do this. Zoom, 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 zoom. And the Lord was saying, just trust me. Stand there and do what you got to do. Mm. One time, I had a friend who sent me a brochure. And on the brochure was my picture saying the workshop I was going to give. He had not called me. So he hadn't. He just sent me the brochure. Yeah. So I called him up and I said, Orlando, I just saw the brochure. Good, because that's what I need you to do. Listen, I'm in a hurry. I got to go. Yeah. I was calling him to tell him that I couldn't do this, that I had never done anything like this before in my life and that I couldn't imagine myself doing this. And my husband said to me, listen, you are an anointed woman of God. Amen. And you can teach these people and then some. And he put me in the car on that day. And we were on our way from Connecticut to Boston. And I kept telling my husband that I couldn't do this and how I couldn't do this. And, and my husband kept praying and telling me that I could do it and praying and telling me that I could do it. And I kept saying, I can't, I can't. And finally, he, he stops the car. And he said, comes around, opens the door. And he said to me, woman, get out of the car. Wow. And I said, oh my God, he's me right here. <laughs> <laughs> and then he came up to me. Right there on the road, with the car's going vroom, vroom, and he goes, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> and he prayed for me, he goes, all right, that's it, that's all I got, get in the car. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't say a single word after that. Amen. I got there and I stood in front of people that I thought they knew everything, and I said to them, I asked them one question, and not one of them could answer the question. I asked the question three different ways and they couldn't answer the question. And I thought, wow, I was right. I was my husband. They don't know. And then I started going into the workshop and I became passionate about what I was teaching and I forgot about being nervous. Amen. Amen. And then I had to keep practicing being in that place. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. So that I could feel like I belonged there. Does everybody hear what I'm saying? Amen. Yes. yes. That's the pathway of the Lord. The disruptor has come. The disruptor has come. Now I'm going to finish. And I'm going to show you one last thing. One day there was a man who had some chickens that he was selling in the market. And there was a pole. And each one of the chickens had its little leg tied with a little string to the pole. And the chickens were there all day. <laughs> there they were. And this man came and said, I feel so sorry for those chickens. How much are those chickens? 
and they told him how much they were. And the man went home and found the money, and he came back and he said, here, and he paid him for each one of the chickens. And they took all the strings and cut them and gave him the chickens on the string so that they wouldn't go away. And the man took the chickens and let them loose and went, shoop, shoop, shoop. And the chickens went, And when they did that, then the chickens started looking at each other from across the way. And as they did, they started gathering a whole new place. <laughs> and when they gathered in the whole new place, what do you think those chickens did? Stay together. Stay together. Same thing. Yeah. Because it's what they were used to do. Yes. That's you and me. That's you and me. Wow. We're used to doing the same thing all the time. Yes. We don't know any better. The Lord will take us out of where we are, take us to a new place, and we're going to come back and keep doing the same thing. Jesus. Wow. It's what we're used to. No one has to take that string and tie us to the pole anymore. My goodness. We've taught ourselves how to Jesus. do it. But when the disruptor comes, he says, follow me. Yes, God. And you're used to a particular step, and you have to get out of step and follow the disruptor. So the question is, is this church open to the disruptor? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is this church open to the disruptor? Jesus. What do you see? Jesus is knocking on the door. Woo! Jesus. Jesus. Will you as a church, will you as a person, open the door to the Lord? All these people are saying, don't let him in. He will change everything. My God. The disruptor. Yes, God. Come. Yes, God. Yes, God. Oh, Take a moment with the Lord. I'm not going 